Happy New Year and welcome back to Drinks and Discussions True Crime. Um, it has been a while, but we are going to jump back into it. Um, as you can see, I'm not with Autumn, my co-host today, uh, because I think she succumbed to her uh, partying on New Year's Eve last night. But in honor of her, we are drinking water today so we can recover um, from our shenanigans for New Year's Eve. So I hope everyone had a happy and safe Christmas uh, and holiday, whatever holiday you celebrate, and uh, happy New Year's. But today we are going to be talking about something a little bit darker than, um, you know, probably what you've been doing for the last few days. So um, it's really popular right now. The FIFA World Cup uh, just ended. Um, it was Everybody was talking about it, and we're going to talk about it too. Uh, the 1994 FIFA World Cup, there was an incident that happened, um, and it made a man named Andres Escobar known for his death instead of his life. Uh, whenever you hear about people, you know, passing away, like when you watch Dateline or whatever, they always say, like, their smile lit up a room, and they were the perfect son, and blah, blah, blah. Andres, he really was that guy. Like, legit, he was the guy who, like, smile lit up a room. Like, if someone was grieving, he would stay there with them. If somebody needed help, he would help them. He, His dad was a banker. Uh, he grew up middle, middle class, born 1967. His father was a banker, and he created an organization that w- to help kids stay off the streets. Um, so how did he do that? By allowing them to play soccer. Um, so Andres Escobar, he was a professional soccer player when he grew up and he kind of carried on his father's legacy by trying to help the community, uh, and things like that. He was a really good guy. He went to church every week or to mass. He was a devout Catholic. He went to mass every week with his mother while she was alive, read his Bible every day. Uh, he had two bookmarks in his Bible. One was a picture of his mother. One was a picture of his fiance. Like literally everything about this guy, he was the perfect man. Um, in his actual soccer or football career, um, he was called El Caballero de Football, which is uh, the gentleman of football because the way he played was gentlemanly. Uh, and he had a very... Uh, respectful behavior, like when he was on the field and when he was off the field. So, you know, he was an amazing guy. Uh, He played or he lived in Medellin, Colombia. Now, I'm sure you've heard of that place um, because it has quite a a history and an image, a tarnished image. And, you know, you might be thinking Escobar, maybe he's related to Pes- Pablo Escobar. Uh, by blood, no, there's no relation between Andres and Pablo. However, uh, the story does kind of relate them in a way. Um, and I would like to recommend before we get into this, if you are interested in this story, there's a really great documentary done by uh, ESPN 30 for 30. Uh, and it's called The Two Escobars, I think. Oh, but anyway. Uh, it's a really awesome documentary. It really gets into like the um, the intertwinement of like the club football and the cartels. So it's really crazy. But so anyway, we talked about when he was a kid. Now we're going to talk about his international career. Obviously, I said he was a professional football player. He played football for Colombia, um, and he was Colombia qualified for the FIFA World Cup. He didn't actually play in any of the like games for them to be qualified. However, he did play in the World Cup. Uh, it, it, there's it, there's obviously some corruption in the government at this time. We're talking about a time period when Pablo Escobar was um, kind of manifest destiny. He's kind of taking over like all of the surrounding areas, paying off government officials and things like that. And it really infiltrated the professional football world because easily someone like Pablo Escobar could easily pay off a referee or, you know, whatever 
and have them basically throw a game. And there was a lot of money invested in uh, football and gambling and things like that, (laughs) even to the point of money laundering. Like they were using the professional football leagues to launder money. Um, It's Escobar. Well, Andres Escobar, he became a victim of all of this crap going on. Um, So anyway, 1984 FIFA World Cup. We're talking about like this the second match. Uh he is playing against the United States. At the time, the goal is zero to zero. There's like no points. Um when they're playing USA, one of their uh teammates, he's passing the ball, trying to make a cross to another teammate. <laughs> Excuse me. Trying to make a cross to another teammate. Escobar is like you know, I'm going to infiltrate. I'm going to go in. I'm going to take possession of the ball for my own team. He goes in, he touches the ball during the pass and the ball accidentally goes into Colombia's goal. So he scored an own goal in the FIFA world cup. Um, there was one more goal made, made by the U S one more goal made by Colombia. It could have been a draw if Escobar wouldn't have made the own goal, but he did. And so, I mean, they they got kicked out of their place in the FIFA World Cup and the USA. They like they were eliminated and the USA got to move on. So obviously, like people were really hard on him because he made his own goal. Now we're talking about football. We're talking about the um, invincible number two. Number two was the number on his jersey. Uh, And he was a genuinely just nice guy. And of course, he took the criticism as well as possible. (laughs) But even in like round 16 of the FIFA World Cup, one of the announcers, uh, one of the commentators, I'm sorry, one of the commentators, he said during the broadcast, this is a totally different game. He says during the broadcast that, uh, I'm sorry, what, I'm, I'm trying to find exactly what he said. This is why I need Autumn. Um, well, I'm going to just tell you about what he said. Uh, somebody made a goal and he was like, oh, they deserve to be shot for that or whatever. Him saying that, that is like totally like inappropriate because the day before that happened, Andres Escobar was gunned down outside of a club. So he makes his own goal. He's like, screw it. I'm going back to Colombia and I'm going to go party with my friends. So he goes to his friends, a uh, little celebration they're having at a bar in Medellin. And then they are like drinking at the bar and then they decide to go like hit up a liquor store. They're going to get a little bit more drink like we were doing last night. Uh, and then he goes to El in- Indio nightclub. So him and his friends, they're partying at the nightclub. Andres is trying to forget this BS that happened. Uh, And while he's partying or whatever, him and his friends get split up. So about three o'clock in the morning, like after they're kind of partying, Andres is like, okay, I'm going to head out. I don't know if he was going home or what, but he was like, I'm going to head out. He's alone in the parking lot, sitting in his car, and three men appeared. Now it's debatable how this all went down um, because some people say that the men were criticizing him about making his own goal and it, he was a really nice guy and I just don't see the the argument in getting super violent. However, he had been drinking all night. So maybe, I mean, I don't know. I can't tell you exactly what happened, but I can tell you that there was some sort of an argument. Some people say that, you know, they were mad at him because of the argument. Some people say that they were uh, workers for Gallon, Santiago Gallon, who who heavily lost a bet because of the outcome of the game. Um, So there's, you know, conflicting stories about why this little altercation actually happened. 
But either way, three men appeared, two of them took out guns, and he was shot six times. Um, it's reported that the shooter yelled goal after every shot. Um, and that's every time during the game that a goal was scored, the commentators will say goal, you know. So uh, pe- that's why people say it's probably an argument about him making his own goal or whatever. Um, but it really, the problem isn't that he made his own goal. The problem is the excessive violence that is in Medellin, Colombia at this time. So obviously he was severely injured. They left him in the truck to just basically bleed to death. But somebody did call um, emergency services in that place. And he was taken to the hospital and he sadly died 45 minutes after going to the hospital. Now the murder of Andres completely tarnished the image of Colombia as if it wasn't already going to be, you know, tarnished by the cartel activity and the drugs and the severe violence that just everyone was experiencing, the corruption in the government, et cetera, et cetera. No, one of the biggest things that tarnished them was the murder of this just genuinely loved and respected person in uh, their community. Uh, so the one of the guys who uh, was actually arrested for the murder, he was a cartel bodyguard. So he obviously had ties with the cartel. Uh, and he also <coughs> worked as a cab driver not a cab driver, a driver, like a limousine driver or like a personal chauffeur or whatever. He also worked as a driver for Santiago Gallon, who was the guy who lost a bet um, on this Columbia USA game. So he was found guilty of Escobar's murder because he admitted it. He was like, yeah, I did it, whatever. Um, and he was sentenced to prison. Over time, his prison sentence was reduced several times, and he ended up only serving 11 years in prison. Here in the United States, you'll be in prison for life and maybe even executed, depending on like what the laws are in your state. It's quite obvious that um, there was some corruption, and Gaillon definitely have paid off uh, the prison and government officials and whatever to get this guy released due to good behavior. So anyway, he was released in 2005. The rest of his accomplices totally acquitted. No one else is charged for the crap. <laughs> and there was actually some allegations that the Gallon brothers had bribed the prosecutor's office. The prosecutor's office contends that he Castro was simply following orders. So, you know, they didn't have credible evidence to convict the accomplices. And obviously, you know, the family of Andres was not happy about that. And they did speak out and say that uh, obviously this is proof of bribery of the government officials, because how else did this guy only serve 11 years in prison after murder, murdering a huge, widely respected celebrity? Um, so, you know, whatever. Internationally, Colombia, their whole just image to the world was totally tarnished. I think that Pablo Escobar had worked so hard to promote like a positive image of Colombia um, and even earn acclaim within Colombia that his fans were just like totally devastated uh, in his death because it's just such a sign that what he was fighting for was so necessary. Uh, he and he could be, became a victim of that, really. Um, after he died, there is now a statue of Pablo in um, Pablo. Oh, my God. There is a statue of Andres in uh, Medellin that, you know, people love to visit. And they also created an association or an organization really similar to the one that his dad had created uh, that to help keep kids off the streets and keep them 
playing soccer and doing something that's going to help them. So, you know, it's, there's a majority of, of people like Andres, they come from like a really poor neighborhood and, you know, they've experienced the things that people have experienced. And that was totally not the case with Andres. He grew up like in private schools, middle class, dad was a banker. Like he grew up like, I don't want to say silver spoon in his mouth, but he, he grew up in a very, very good environment. So for him to see these other people who are in need, it has absolutely no experience ever, like in that type of situation. It just really pulled at his heartstrings that he really wanted to help people who didn't have the opportunities that he had. Um, so, you know, something really cool about Andres is, uh, I mean, honestly, I just want to say he has a mullet and I just think that's super cool. It's like his, um, it's like his image, I guess, whatever. Uh, and I think it's funny because he like he was like a really popular like really um well off like a great guy and he chose to have a mullet and i just i don't know i just kind of love it but um so yeah i would love to go see his cool uh statue or whatever but um you know i don't know i think that obviously there's two sides of two sides well more than two sides there's many sides of the story possibilities that could have happened um but it, all of it involves some type of corruption. So, you know, it, it's definitely a necessity to have people like um, Andres Escobar to kind of pull things back together and try to keep people going. And I think it's good that even today they still highly respect him. They love to um, celebrate him. And I, th I think it was seven, seven months later. Seven months after Andres Escobar was killed, Pablo Escobar was taken out. So it's it's really interesting. They passed away around the line at the same time. Um, their like climax in their life was around the same time, and their lives are like two juxtapositions because Pablo Escobar he grew his fame off of like violence and hurting the community which some people say he helped but you know why he helped was to corrupt but anyway and then we have andre Escobar who helped the people who were not as good as like in a situation as he was and it's i don't know it's crazy it's just like total symbolism and that their last names are as mind-blowing um but anyway in, in that era when drug cartels were you know a big thing or whatever you have this guy who genuinely wants to do good things for the people um and i do think that like i said there was that 30 for 30 episode the two escobars i really think that's what it's called but i should google it that's autumn google it just kidding but um i do highly i feel like i'm rambling but it's the story is like it's almost hard to believe and it's like a movie, you know? So I think it's the documentary that they made on it. It's really good. It's like an hour and a half long, but it's totally worth the watch. Um, but yeah, so that is our story about Andres Escobar and the wonderful things that he did in his life and how tragic it is that he is known for the way that he died and not the way that he lived because truly he was the gentleman of football. Uh, and I think that we should keep talking about him and things that happen because history does repeat itself. Um, and I think it's important that we search for the helpers and keep them lifted up so that we can admire them and our kids can model themselves after them and et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, so I hope that I wasn't boring you today by myself, but maybe you just needed my ASMR voice to lull you while you recover from your hangover. So here's like, so like, ASMR. Um, but yeah, so hopefully Autumn will be back next week. Um, I really hope that she is because there's like a really crazy thing going on where there's a, 
what city is it? One second, I'm gonna Google something. Um, there's like a story going on uh, in Moscow, Idaho. <laughs> I could not remember the, the state that it was in, but of course it's Idaho. Um, but anyway, Moscow, Idaho, in the last month, there's been like four murders. I've been closely following this case, but obviously not close enough to remember as in Idaho. But um, I've been closely following this case, and just just recently, like just on Friday, just a couple of days ago, they arrested a college student for the murders. And I would love to like just chat about that a little bit. And talk about another story, because this one, I mean, not all the details are out yet, but it's it's kind of crazy. I mean, I don't want to tell you too much, because I want to talk about it with Autumn, but um, the guy apparently was doing, like, a like a class project or whatever, and he had, like, some creepy questions he was asking people, and now he's being uh, questioned for murders? Anyway, I would love to talk about that. Uh, and then also, I would love to hear any stories that you guys have heard of that you'd like to just discuss and have a little drink. And next week, <laughs> I'll have a real drink, because. Uh, but I just had to stay hydrated today. I know y'all are probably doing the same thing if you're awake right now. But anyway, we love you, ghosties, and uh, I hope that you come back to see us next week. And I hope you have a very happy new year. Don't forget to eat your black eyed peas tonight that you get all the good luck in the world because you deserve it.